Good, we are all good. It's already summer time. Welcome, Sister Eleanor. Rest from the Santos. Santos. Okay, uh, we really miss you and thank God that uh, God has brought you here with uh, Brother uh, Joe. Say the song. Amen. Can you stand the person beside you? I'm happy that you are here today. I'm happy to here today. Amen. Amen. Now I'm really happy with the friends uh, for seeing you again here at the feast. Uh, that after three weeks of uh, not uh, seeing each other for, for most of you. So we are back to our uh, home. <laughs> we are back to our territory. Worshipping uh, worshiping God and listening uh, to His Word. Again, can you just tell the person beside you, God will meet your deepest need today. Come on. Whatever is your need with your friends, God will be in it today. Amen? Amen? Amen. Maybe some of you, you know, you came here at the feast with a heavy heart, a heavy burden in your shoulder, a heavy burden in your heart. Yes, some of you perhaps have some conflict with your loved ones, a conflict with a wife, a conflict with a hubby. But you're coming here at the pizza, you're having some discussion in the car, you know, or a conflict with an office mate, a conflict with a co worker, or perhaps some of you are still, you know, having some problems adjusting with life here in Australia. Yeah! <laughs> I want you to know, my friends, that God really knows what, is, what you're going through at the moment. Amen? God really knows what's happening to you. And you know, the good news is that God understands you. Amen? Amen. And He's standing right beside you. You know, just uh, tapping your shoulder and telling you, my son, my daughter, I thank you so much for coming here. Be assured that your need today will be met. Amen? Amen. Can we give you a hand for that? Hallelujah. Yes, brothers and sisters. We come to the right place because it is only God who can meet that deepest need, whatever need you have in your heart today. Amen? Can we now stand up and let's pray our favorite prayer that is our divina to God's love. Today I receive all of God's love. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings. Healing and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word. So I become like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I'm blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen.
story of a young man who really loves his car so much. His BMW. You know, when, when he, he, he wakes up in the morning, he would just bow down before the BMW. He makes the BMW his God. And uh, one time while uh, he was opening the door of his car in a busy street, there was this speeding car coming behind. And it hit, you know, the, the, the door of the car. And you know what had happened? The door of the car was ripped off together with the hand. <laughs> when this happened, when a friend, the man shouted, Oh my gosh, the door of my car, the door of my car is gone. It is gone. And then the bystanders who came to the rescue, they shouted to the man, Don't focus on the door of your car. <laughs> focus on your hand. Your hand is gone. Your hand is gone. And then the man shouted, Oh my gosh, my Rolex watch is gone. <laughs> my Rolex watch is gone. What do you call this, brothers and sisters? This is idolatry, isn't it? But you know, there is another form of idolatry. You know what it is? When you seek from another person something that only God can give, that's idolatry. I repeat, when you seek from another person the things that only God can give, that's idolatry. And what are these things? You know, your peace of mind, you know, your, your inner happiness, your identity, your purpose, the definition of life, your dreams and your aspirations, your happiness. If you want to seek your happiness from the other person, you will always be frustrated. Because it's only God, you know, who can make you happy. Amen? It is only God who can win your needs. So brothers and sisters, today let's pray. That the Lord will speak to us through this message. And we speak to our hearts that this message be a life-changing message to reach in our minds. Perhaps during the past, uh, you know, experience some frustrations in your relationships, past relationships, or even present relationships. And maybe the reason is, you know, because of an idolatrous relationship. Because you're trying to seek from another person the things that only God can. And today, my dear friends, God is telling you, here am I, my son, and my daughter. I am the only one satisfy and fill your hearts with your prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, Heavenly, thank you so much. Thank you for, for your word over God. May you speak to us on that today. May your spirit, Lord, that will speak into our hearts. Even as I stand, Lord God, before my brethren at this point in time, not worthy of God, but I just pray, oh Lord God, that you will touch my lips in my tongue. That I may be able, Lord God, to deliver a word that will change, Lord God, the life of each and every of us. Thank you, Father God, for your love for us. Yes, oh Lord, we need you, Lord. We need you. We need your message for each and every one of us today. And we just pray, oh God, that this message will be a life-changing message for each and every one. All of this you know us.
and uh, he went straight to heaven, you know, and uh, at the pearly gates of heaven, he met Saint Peter. The woman entered heaven. Wow, it's really a beautiful place that no words, you know, can ever describe the place. It was a beautiful place. And uh, the moment he entered, she entered heaven, she forgot everything. She forgot her past, you know. She forgot that she had a husband, or children, or, you know, she forgot her life or not. Because the place, brothers and sisters, is so beautiful. You know, after three months of being in heaven, St. Peter approached him, approached her. And St. Peter told her, can you just, can you just uh, replace me for a moment at the pearly gate of heaven? Because God the Father has given me another responsibility. So I want you to stand, you know, at the gate of heaven and welcome those who are coming in. So that was the request of St. Peter. And the woman said, oh, of course, yeah, what an honor, you know. I've just been here for three months and you're giving me this big responsibility. Okay, I will go. And St. Peter told her, okay, before anyone else could enter heaven, there has to be a password. So tell them to spell the word love. Okay? If uh, they're able to spell the word love, they can enter heaven. Okay, so she started her job early in the morning. And you know what? Her first customer, from a far distance, she showed this man, familiar to her. And as the man was approaching the gate of heaven, she recognized that the man was her husband. Wow! <laughs> and her husband is coming. And the husband recognized her also, who is now standing at the gate of heaven. And the husband said, what are you doing here? <laughs> He said, this is the job of St. Peter. Uh, and the wife said, no, I'm just uh, relieving St. Peter. And I'm happy to see you. you know? And they embrace each other. They kiss each other. And uh, the wife said, how are you now? What are you doing? And the man said, oh, my life is good. My life is great since the time you died. You know? <laughs> and you know the nurse looking after you, the young nurse, the young beautiful nurse who was looking after you, we ended up being together. <laughs> You became husband and wife, you know, after your death, you, I won a lotto, and uh, yeah, we, we went uh, around the world for our honeymoon, uh, and yeah, after three months, I died. <laughs> and you know, the excitement of the, of the lady, of the woman, in her face, and the happy face that he, she had, started to fade, when she was hearing what the husband was telling her. And, uh, the husband said, can I know enter heaven? No, 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 you need, you know, you need to, to spell a word. You know, brothers and sisters, because uh, the, the lady was a bit upset, and she changed the word. Okay, instead of uh, spell love, the lady said, spell paradigm. Uh, <laughs> and and the, the man said, okay, I'll try, I'll try to spell it. P A R A. What's next? And the... Uh, he forget the next letter. And uh, the man said, Is there anything easier than this? Come on. Para nang tayo nang pinagsamahan. And, uh, okay, I'm giving you another chance. The woman said, Spell Chicoslovakia. Brothers <laughs> <laughs> and sisters, uh, what is paradigm? You know? Paradigm actually is a framework. It's a worldview. It is a framework by which we see things. It's a worldview. It's a framework. For example, if you're wearing an eyeglass, you know, and the color of your eyeglass is green. So what do you see around you? It's green color, isn't it? You see the, the houses in green, you see the cars in green, you know, you see the grass in green, of course, the grass in green. <laughs> And if you're wearing a red eyeglass, of course, it follows that what you're going to see around you are in red color. So, brothers and sisters, paradigm is how you look at things around you. It is how you see things in your life. It is how you look at things. 
It is how you look at events. It is how you look at everything that is happening around you. And today, I just want to share to you two kinds of paradigm. Number one is the performance paradigm. Okay, so what is the performance paradigm? A performance paradigm is when your focus, my friends, your focus is the things that you can get from the other person to make you happy. So that's performance paradigm. To me, to say that, uh, you know, when, uh, when your happiness, you really believe that your happiness, brothers and sisters, depends on the performance and behavior of the other person. To me, to say, if, if the other person does not behave or does not perform in accordance with your expectation, then you believe that you will not be happy. I'll give you an example. For example, a mother, you know, her dream for her son is to become a doctor. And the mother would tell her son, Son, I will only be happy, you know, when you become a doctor. Or I will be the happiest mother on planet Earth when you become an engineer or when you become, you know, a pilot. So what message are you telling yourself? You're actually telling a message to yourself that your happiness, dear friends, depends on the performance and behavior of the other person. If the other person does not behave the way you're expecting it, then you will not be happy. So that's performance paradigm. Your focus is what you can get from the other person, which you believe it will make you a happy person. So are you getting what I'm saying? Amen? And uh, you know this kind of paradigm, my friend, could lead into what we call idolatrous relationships. Because in an idolatrous relationship, you are seeking the things from the other person that only God can give. So you are trying to seek from the other person something that only God can give. And what are these things? We said it a while ago. Your inner peace. Your deep happiness. Your integrity. You know? Your identity, your purpose, the definition of life, your dreams and your aspirations. If you try to seek these things from the other person, brothers and sisters, you will always be frustrated. Because the other person can never be what only God can be. Amen? Now I have a friend back home, a lady friend, and she would always compare her husband to other husbands. You know? She would always uh, say that her husband is not as good as the other husbands. Her husband is not as good looking as the other husbands. <laughs> her husband is not as responsible as the other husbands. Her husband is not as a good provider as the other husbands. Yeah! She had a lot of complaints. She had a lot of whinging about her husband. But my dear sister wives, no matter how perfect your husband is, no matter how good-looking your husband is, <laughs> I don't care if your husband looks like you know, Brad Pitt. I don't care if your husband looks like uh, Tom Cruise. I don't care if your husband looks like John Lloyd. The more that I don't care if your husband looks like me, <laughs> your husband can just do you so much. The only one who can satisfy your deepest need, my dear friends, the only one who can make your deepest need is God. Amen? He is the only one who can satisfy your deepest needs. And for the husbands who are here, I really don't care if your wife is beautiful, you know, today. <laughs> I don't care if her body is a Coca-Cola shape. Because someday her body will become, you know, cooking can. <laughs> or I don't care if her, if her skin is smooth. Because, uh, you know, 20 years from now, that skin will be filled with wrinkles. Your wife can just do you so much. My dear friends, uh, the only one who can make your deepest thing is God. And God. Amen? She's the only one who can make our deepest things. 
And to the singles, brothers and sisters who are here, you know your boyfriend or your girlfriend, they can just do so much to you. Only God can meet your needs. And for brothers and sisters who don't have boyfriend or girlfriend or still waiting for the prince charming or their woman of the dreams, uh, I want to tell you this. That don't be discreet for a woman or a man to make you happy. Amen? Don't be discreet for a woman or a man to make you happy. Be better be happy now in the embrace of God, in the love of God. Amen? Don't ever tell yourself, oh, I'll only be a complete person when that prince charming of mine or that woman of my dream will come into my life. Friends, when that day comes that your prince charming or your woman of your dream will come. Well, thank God. But I want to tell you that you don't need a man or a woman to make you a complete person. Because right at this moment, you are already complete. Amen? Right at this moment, you are already a complete person. And for brothers and sisters who are also single, but before you were married, again, don't be desperate for a man or a woman to make you happy. Don't ever tell yourself, oh, I'll only be a complete person when the man of my dream or woman of my dream will be able to come for the second or third time around. Brothers and sisters, you don't need a man or a woman to make you a complete person because right at this very moment, you're already a complete person in Christ Jesus. Amen? Can we give a pop of hand for that? Hallelujah! You know, brothers and sisters, while I was preparing this talk, I came across this question. You know, and uh, I asked the Lord, Lord, why didn't you create us with a vacuum or a void or a, an empty space in our hearts that you alone can fill? Why did you do that? You know? I was asking the Lord in prayer, why did you create us with a vacuum or with an empty space or with a void in our hearts that only you can fill? And I believe that the Lord spoke to me through my understanding and He told me, Son, the reason why I created you with a void or a vacuum in your heart because that's the only way for me to share my love for you. That's the only way for me to fulfill that very purpose why I have created you. Brothers and sisters, yes, it is only God who can satisfy our needs. Amen? It's only God who can meet our needs. Can you tell again the person beside you? It's only God who can meet your needs. It's only God who can meet your you know, sometimes we're trying, you know, to get from the other person, you know, the things that only God can give. This is the reason why we experience trouble in our relationship. Because we are pushing the other person to give us, you know, the things that only God can give. Our peace of mind, our happiness, our identity, our purpose, you know. Brothers and sisters, if we want to overcome my idolatrous relationship, we should stop seeking from the other person those things that only God can do. Amen? We should go to God and seek Him those things from Him. And uh, let's go to the second paradigm. The second paradigm is the prodigal paradigm. Maybe some of you, this is your first time <laughs> to, to hear this word, prodigal paradigm. What is it? What is it all about? You know, when I was preparing for this talk, it's also my first time, you know, <laughs> to encounter this word, prodigal paradigm. You are familiar with the part of the prodigal son, right? Why was the son called prodigal? Prodigal means extravagant and excessive spending. It's a, it's a reckless extravagance. The reason why the son was called prodigal, because he was so extravagant and spending all the money he got from his father. You know, when, when, when he got the money from his father, half of the wealth of the father, the son went to a far country and he spent all the money, isn't it? Extravagantly with his friends, with uh, his womanizing, with all the other, you know, uh, vices 
like gambling, drinking, and so on and so on. And until finally, the money that he had is gone. And he was forced to work in a figure part. They were going to read the Bible, parable in the Bible. The son, this man, who is now working in a piggery farm, ate the food of the pig, isn't it? And then finally he became like a pig. <laughs> Smells like a pig. And uh, yeah, at the end he came into his senses. He told himself, Oh my gosh, in my father's house, the servants of my father, they are eating good food. You know, they are eating steak, pasta, <laughs> dinubuan, lechon. <laughs> kare kare. <laughs> and they're having good uh, dessert, you know, different kinds of fruit. And here I am, I'm eating, you know, the, the food of the pigs. And the son told himself, I will go back to my father. I will go back to my father. And he prepared a speech for the friends. I will tell my father when I go back to him, Father, don't just consider me. Don't consider me as your son. Just consider me. So I'll be able to eat good food in the house. And yes, my friends, the son went back to his father. And one afternoon, the father was sitting outside the house. And from a far distance, we saw this man familiar to him. It was his son coming home. <laughs> and the father stood up, my friends, and he ran towards the son. And you know, he embraced the son, he kissed the son. And you know, when the son started his uh, speech, the father interrupted, no, 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 stop. And he called his servants, come on, bring, bring the new clothes, you know, bring the new shoes, bring the ring, put it on his finger, come on, kill the father and calf, and invite our friends, let's have this. Because this son of mine who was dead, but now he is alive. This son of mine was lost, but now he is found. Brothers and sisters, what was the father doing to the son? He was doing, or was expressing an extravagant love. Amen? If the, if the son was called prodigal, the father can also be called a prodigal father. Not because he was so extravagant in spending money to nonsense living, but because he was so extravagant in showing his love to the son. Amen? His focus with your friends is not what he can get from the son at that very moment. He did not tell the son, come on, before you are able to enter the house, you need to kneel down before me and ask for forgiveness. You, know? you need to repay the money that you got from me. No, no, no. The father did not say that. But he told his servants, come on, kill the father. Now. Put the new ring in his finger. The 20 cards, uh, you know, gold ring. And uh, uh, allow him to wear a suit uh, because his son of mine was dead, but now he is. Brothers and sisters, the focus of the father right at that moment is what he can give to the son in order to make the son a complete person once again. Amen? His focus is what he can give to the son to make the son happy. So prodigal paradigm, dear friends, is your focus. It's not what you can get from the other person to make you happy. But your focus is what you can give to make the other person in the relationship happy. Amen? So that's the focus of the prodigal part. It's what you can give. It's, a, it's all about giving that makes the other person in the relationship And uh, you know some people would say that when you love somebody unconditionally, they say that they will abuse you. When you love your son or your daughter unconditionally, some people would say that they will abuse you. Your son or daughter will abuse you. Or when you love your parents unconditionally, they say that you know, your parents will abuse you. I don't think so, my friends. Because I really believe that love begets love. Amen? Love begins love. If you love unconditionally, my dear friends, you will also be loved unconditionally. If, if you care and serve other people unconditionally, you will also be served and cared for by the other people 
and condition. So, in a relationship, the law of reciprocity will supplies. So, have you heard the law of reciprocity? Okay. The law of reciprocity states that you attract what you give. Okay. Meaning to say, whatever you give, you shall receive. Okay? If you give love, you shall receive love. If you give a smile, I'm smiling at you, you're smiling at me. <laughs> so, so if, if, if you sow something, you're going to reap. So whatever you sow, you shall reap. Whatever you give, you shall receive. So the law of reciprocity applies also in relationship. You know, when you love unconditionally, you will also be loved unconditionally. Because that's a law, that's a natural law, that's a universal law. A law that can never be repelled by your friends. It's like a law of gravity. You know? So you know the law of gravity? It states that when you when you drop something from a certain height, that thing will always go down, isn't it? It will not go up, right? <laughs> if you jump from a building, you will not go up, you will always go down. That's the law of gravity. Because the direction and the force of gravity is always going down. So the law of reciprocity, my dear friends, is Whatever you planted, you shall reap. Whatever you gave, you shall receive. No wonder the, 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 the happiest people in the world are the people who are generous. No? The people who are really uh, all out in their giving. You know the reason why? Because whatever they give, it returns a hundred followers. Brothers and sisters, it also applies in our relationship. When you love your husband unconditionally, yeah, you will be loved unconditionally. When you love your children unconditionally, you will also be loved unconditionally. You know, for the past 21 years, I would say that my wife and I, despite our imperfections as parents, were able to love our son unconditionally. We love him, but you know, we did not spoil him. But we love him unconditionally. And he grew up as a good person. Past 21 years, grew up as a nice person, as a good person generally, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's not only good, but it's also good looking. <laughs> and uh, like her mom, she was a little bit of a mom. And you know, my friends, uh, yeah, I would say that the, the love that the, we have shown our son the past 21 years is really a love that made him. As a person now. And I really believe that uh, he re reciprocated love. You know, he, he, whatever love that we have shown him, he's reciprocating it. Or he's giving it back. And, you know, I, I have this list of uh, love notes coming from my son. And uh, when I'm tired of uh, work uh, during my time, when I'm alone in my study room, I would go back to this love notes. You know? I would enter, I would uh, open the computer, the Facebook, uh, because uh, usually, you know, greet me on Facebook, uh, and I would read those letters. And every time I read these letters, my dear friends, there's always a tear that falls from my eyes. Because right at the very moment, I felt that I loved. I felt that I loved. And I want to share to you some of these letters. As I've said, he's already a grown-up man, but he's a sweet, you know, sweet boy. And this one, this was, this was his uh, uh, greetings to me during Father's Day. Can you read it? Are you able to read it? Happy Father's Day to the man who sacrificed so much to give us a better life. Thanks, God, and I love you. This was his greeting last Father's Day. You know, prior to that, uh, uh, pr prior to Father's Day, uh, that was Saturday, so I had a chance to, to teach him how to drive. You know? It's really hard to teach how to drive, you know? especially when you're teaching your loved ones. You know? <laughs> because there's no barrier, isn't it? And you shut, you shut. And there was this point when, when he crossed the other lane without, without looking in the mirror, you know? And, and he was, uh, you know, he's a new driver, an inexperienced driver. He just crossed the other line and there was this spinning car coming from behind. And we almost got hit by the friends. 
And then uh, the, the car just overtook us and uh, he showed us his dirty finger and uh, he just swear at us and, and I was so mad at him during the time and it's common sense I told him <laughs> when you cross the other side I told him you have to you know uh, see the, the mirror uh, you need to see your 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 uh, your the side and everything and uh, yeah we had this uh, not not a big fight but just a medium fight my friends <laughs> medium fight because we're almost you know almost hit and then. Uh, and I was so mad. Of course, when you're almost hit, you don't say, Oh, we're almost hit. Muntin na tayo mabangga. I don't think. <laughs> you can say that, amen? <laughs> and I forget I'm a preacher, you know? <laughs> and uh, during night time, my friends, uh, uh, my son was not talking to me, and uh, I, I, I wasn't was talking to him. But, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, the next day is Father's Day, you know, and yeah, during night time, I just entered his room. And I just told him, son, I'm sorry for hurting you. I'm sorry for shouting at you. And this could be me. And yeah, we just embraced son. The following morning, he posted that message on Facebook. Happy Father's Day to the man who sacrificed so much. You know when I'm reflecting with the word sacrifice so much, it's true. It's really true. You know? <laughs> <laughs> to give us a better life. Thanks, Dad. And I love you. And when I, I read the word I love you, tears fall from my eyes. Because I felt that I really loved unconditional. In spite of all the shouting, you know, and my son still loves me. It's good he's not here because I cannot say this. No. <laughs> this morning is precious. Anyway, another letter that he told me. That was during my birthday. Wow. Happy birthday to my dedicated, passionate, and ridiculously handsome God. Wow. Is it true? <laughs> May you keep being an inspiration to me and to all the people you meet. Love you, God. Was his grieving during my last week. And again, every time I read those notes, I always feel something deep in my heart. No? I feel the love. Love coming from my son. I feel the love overflowing. And another letter, the last one of the days. This was his uh, uh, greeting to me during Father's Day. Last year. Yeah. yeah, I read it. When I was a kid, my dad used to take me to the convenience store to buy a Coke and select the ice cream for both of us. I used to be so small. I could stand in the car seat and my head would barely touch the car seat. Fifteen years later, although I cannot stand the car seat anymore, nothing has changed. Today, my dad is still the amazing, selfless, and loving dad. He was in that small, rickety car in 1997. Happy 20th Father's Day, dad. I love you. Anyway, friends, when I read that letter last year, oh my God, I said, really cried. And I don't know why. Maybe because I felt the love coming from this. You know, when you love unconditionally, you will also be loved. Amen? Because whatever you plant, you shall be. Whatever you give, you shall be. Amen? Can we give a clap of praise to God? Hallelujah! Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. And today, my dear friends, I want you to receive the love of God. I want you to receive the prodigal love of God. You know, the extravagant love of God on each and every you know, his focus at this moment is loving you. He's, he's trying to, you know, to, to, to invite you, you know, to, to experience his love and his care, his mercy, his forgiveness. Yes, my dear friends, it is only God who can satisfy and can make you this. God has placed a hole, you know, a vacuum. A space in our heart that only Him can fill. Only Him can fill up to the brim 
Amen? Right at this very moment, God is now telling you, Son, my son, my daughter, it's accept my prodigal love. Don't ever seek from the other person the things that only I can give. Come to me and I will give you the things that can satisfy and meet your needs. Amen? Amen? Can we give a call? Hallelujah! Everyone stand up, my friends. Let's thank the Lord. Let's praise Him. Hallelujah! Can we say, hey, brother, Allah, let's talk to you for a while. I stand in home. And yes, brothers and sisters, today, God is here in your midst. And uh, He is filling the hearts of each and every one of us. Right now, and He's telling us, my sons, my daughters, come to me. And I will fill you. I will fill your love tank. Come to me, and I will satisfy you. Come to me, and I will meet your deepest need at this very moment. Don't ever seek your deepest need from the other person. I alone can give. I alone can meet your needs. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord our God. We glorify your name today, Lord our God. Right now, our hearts are open, Lord God. Whatever we are going through, Lord God, you know, you know what we are going through at this very moment. You know our problems, you know our difficulties, you know our struggles, you know the problems we are facing at this very moment. We offer them all to you, oh God. The vacuum in our heart, the void in our heart, the empty space in our heart. Come, oh Lord God, and fill us to the brain. Fill our hearts, so oh God.
Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, the world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.